What is up fish people? In today's tying test, I'll demonstrate how I tie the mop fly. The first thing we have to do before we put anything on the vise is to prepare our hook, bead, and mop material. So let me show you how to do that. Let's start with the hook. For hooks, I'm using Orifice Tactical Barbless hooks in a size 10. These are jig hooks, which means they have a slight bend in the neck. For beads, I'll be using Fulling Mill slotted tungsten beads, the 3.2 millimeter size in silver. And for our mop material, I'll be using a neon green driver's choice microfiber wash mitt. This comes with a whole bunch of mop bodies on it, some of which I've already used, as you can see right there. And this cost me a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Note that you don't need to use either of these brands, sizes, or colors, but these are just my preferences. Start by taking your bead and putting it circle side first onto the hook point. If you're using a slotted bead on a jig hook, it should be able to slide all the way up to the eye, like so. Next, we need to prepare the mop material. This is simply done by taking some scissors and clipping right at the base of a mop. We'll take our hook and thread it through a little portion of the mop. This will make a more durable mop fly. Now you can see the mop material is actually on the hook. We'll go ahead and take our bead, hook, and mop configuration and secure this in the vise. Make sure this is tight so that you don't have to make too many adjustments later. Since I'm going to be using purple dubbing for the collar of this mop fly, I'm going to choose the darkest thread I have to match this purple color, which in this case is black. So I'm using this black UTC thread. Whatever you have available it should be fine. Before we secure this mop material to the hook shank, I want to first secure the bead in place by creating a little bit of a dam. So I'm going to start my thread off, create a little dam, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that, and clip the tag off. And that will just get my thread started. Then I'll push this mop material up as far as I can to kind of condense these loose fibers at the end. And I want to tie these in with a couple tight wraps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wraps, eight wraps, nine wraps, 10. And now you can kind of see that this is uh, tightening up. Might do a couple more wraps to clean up that side that you guys are seeing. That was probably around 20 wraps, might've been overkill, but it looks pretty secure to me. If you want to change the sizing of your mop fly body, you can push this mop up further or you can pull strands off the end of the mop before you put it on the hook in order to shrink it down. For my mop flies, I typically like to size the tail about a hook shank length off of the end. Let's say my fingernail is about the length of the hook shank and then I got about another fingernail or so off the end of the hook. So that's about the sizing that most of my mop flies tend to be. Now that we have the mop material securely in place, I'm just gonna clean up some of these loose ends and then we'll go ahead and make a collar on this fly. So how I like to do it is I'll go ahead and start my thread at the very end of this dam that I made and I'll give myself a little bit of space to work with here and I'll take a little clump of dubbing. You don't need too much, maybe just a uh, pinky nails worth or a little bit less, however you wanna quantify that and go ahead and stretch it out like so, just to make a dubbing noodle on the thread. So just rolling with your fingers and stretching as needed. You don't want it to be too thick. You wanna have enough dubbing spread out so you can get a couple wraps around the neck collar portion of your fly. That looks about sufficient to me. So once you have this dubbing noodle, this one's about two inches long, uh, you'll push it up to the base of where your thread starts and we'll just make a couple wraps around the thread area of the fly. You're going to want to do one or two wraps maybe at the end. Try to taper the dubbing as you put it on the fly. It's got a little bit of a taper from the bead to the body and then I'll just take this little pick here. You can fluff some of this dubbing out. All right, well that result looks pretty good to me. Um, I think I'm done at this point, so I'll go ahead and take my whip finish tool and make a couple loops around behind the bead. There's 
There's one, two, and then you can make a couple half hitches if you want. Half hitches are easier. You don't need a tool. You can just do it with your finger. Make a loop like that behind the bead, one half hitch. Two half hitches, which I guess makes a whole hitch. Maybe one more for good luck. That's, that's pretty much it. Make sure your thread's nice and tight. And then you can snip your thread at the base. And it's really that simple, that's it. Not too many steps here. If you wanna make it look a little bit more pretty for your fly box, you can fluff it out a little bit more with your pick. Um, but really, that's it. I hope you guys get a chance to tie this fly for yourself, test it out in the water, and definitely let me know how you do. But now let's go to the footage that I filmed last summer on Big Stony Creek where I used this fly to catch some wild rainbow trout. Rainbow in the back. The rainbow ate that uh, little mop fly, purple and green mop fly I just tied right in this back pool. Here he is. He's got a little nub on his mouth. Must have been caught by someone else. Man, he's on there in the back. There he goes. Nice. Nice, man. Good job. You can tell it's, it's virtually a, a monsoon out here. A little bit wet. Holy smokes, that's a big guy. 